Hi, today I want to show you how to create a very simple purchase order for an inventory item. Now, the first thing I want to do, I'm in the purchasing series, I'm going to open up the cards portlet, and I'm going to choose buyers, and here's where we can enter in all the different buyers within our company. Now, we can choose an existing GP user, or we can add someone who's not a GP user. In this case, I'm going to add myself, and I'll give myself the name Belinda, oops, let's do it all caps to be consistent, Belinda Allen. And then I'm asked, is this an existing user, a new buyer, or cancel? An existing user would be a GP user, but this is just a new buyer. So I'll say Belinda Allen and insert. And now I have added myself in as a buyer so I can attach myself with a purchase order without adding me in as a GP user. I'm going to click OK and close the cards down. Let's open up transactions and the very first option is purchase order entry. Now there are a couple different kinds of purchase orders you can enter. A standard, a blanket, or drop ship. And a drop ship can also be as a blanket. I'm just going to do a standard one. Once I click tab, it gives me the next PO number. It takes me to the buyer ID, so I like choosing the buyer ID. Um, that way I can look at purchase orders by individuals who want the purchase order. I have a, a date filled. This is the date of the PO. And if I click on the expansion button there, I also have some additional dates I can enter in, such as what's the requisition date, if there is one, what's the required date, promise date, and so forth. And I then tab to vendor ID. I want to do a look up and grab advanced office systems. That's one of my vendors in payables management. And which currency is this PO going to be in if you have multi-currency? When I come down to the line section, if I just do a look up here by default, I'm going to see um, items based on the vendor numbers. So um, you can change that by clicking on options and tell it to show um, item numbers. Uh, it asks me which unit of measure I am buying it in and I'll choose each here. How many I want to order and I just want one because it's an expensive item. I'll tab again. I could change the description just for this PO if I want to. It will not change it on the item and I can choose which inventory site the item will be sent to. And that is all it takes to creating a purchase order. From here, I can choose to print the purchase order. It'll prompt me to save it. I can also email it if I've set the vendor up to email. In this case, I'm just going to print it to the screen so we can take a look at it. And here's my purchase order. Very simple, very clean. And again, it is something that you could send out. And those are the basics for just maintaining a purchase order. It's simple to use and it's a great way to keep track of your different items. Stay tuned in the future and I'll show you how to use encumbrances. And typically that's something that not-for-profits use, but businesses could really take advantage of it too. Hope this helps. Thanks.